Ed, can you uh, find the, the checkerboards on page two of the uh, of the video test patterns on there? If you can find. Well, we're them. showing you folks with two different test patterns. When we measure contrast ratio, I'll have Kevin go through this at length later on. Uh, the specifications for digital cinema, special locations that we've just written for the electronics industry, deal with contrast ratio in two different dimensions. One is sequential on and off which is kind of meaningful, especially for projectors, because it tells us about the optics, but a much more meaningful specification is intra-frame. And Kevin, I'm assuming since I see our listeners again, I've got a checkerboard up on the screen. Yes, right? we do. That's a much more challenging test pattern, and it's also much more indicative of what we see with real pictures, mm -hmm. where we have black elements and white elements on the same screen. Challenges flat panels, challenges optics, challenges video signal itself, so that's far more interesting. I'll have Kevin go through some measurements on that, but these are two different ways of talking about contrast ratio. The marketing people love sequential because they get a big number. And I've had one manufacturer take my meter and tell me it reads 0.01. Uh, the 0.01 happens to be the noise floor of the meter, but they wanted to use that for measurement. So if the noise floor of the meter is what you're seeing, it has no reading, you've got no measurement. Interesting scenario, but marketing people are making it now, you know, you're seeing numbers of 10 million, 20 million, 30 million. I don't know how big they go, but these are creative artists. They're making wonderful <laughs> money. <laughs> it's nothing to us in the field, but it does make some nice ads. Can we go to the next slide, Kevin? Yeah, we just have to get back to your to the computer. By the way, we did use the checkerboard pattern to measure contrast ratio in all of these things. We have that data. We'll show it to you later. Okay, what are some of the numbers you got using checkerboards on some of these TVs? Boy, we got some big ones, Dwayne um, or Ed. Ed, you did most of it. Um, they were large, though, at 16, 17, 18,000 to 1, weren't they? And then the Samsung LED uh, plasma actually dropped down to about 4,000 to 1, 5,000 to 1. Okay. Did everybody hear that? Did you hear that, Joe? 4,000 to 1 is 17,000. Kevin, that's not competitive. I want my 14 million. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you guys are doing I could have gotten a lot lower number, Joe, if, I, if we used the CS200 standing in the room on a tripod, we would not get numbers like that. But we were using the Klein with the, um, the attachment that you go right up on the screen and isolate the light completely. So in, with that method, you get higher numbers with, mm -hmm. with the uh, checkerboard method. It's not competitive. No, I know. It's their turn. Right. How about the spec for movie theaters, Joel? What's it's roughly 180 to 200 to one is what you achieve in the average movie. Well, the new digital cinema spec, which is spectacular. There are two specs, and remember, we want to give you both: one sequential, one intraframe. And we'll talk more about that because we just emitted those specs. We've got 2,000 to one sequential, and we've gone way up to 150 to one. Oh. Frame, which, by the way, is spectacular. And it's a rare home theater with a the front projector that gives you 151. Now, let's do one other thing. There's a quote we talk about often called 1080p to be or 1080p not to be, and it's not quite a Shakespearean drama, but it's worse. It's a tragedy. Kevin, can we go multiverse in the room, please? Uh, indeed. And let me know if you see these. Back to the real back, back to the church. Not to be technical. Well, the first is a collection of stripes, so can you see these through a straight line? <laughs> or they can jumble the lines together. You can, but you can put, a push a button on the menu and make those... And I've got 1080p those. TVs, and coincidentally, I'm having Kevin send you a 1080p signal. What we should have is every pixel in the digital signal domain finding a home with every physical pixel in display. And that's actually the best part about the television you're at that we live in today. We've got content that matches our TV sets. So if you have a 1080p or a 1080i signal and a 1080p TV, by the way, the flat panels, there are no 1080i TV sets. That's it. We've gone since the days of the gone. So, so everything 1080p in is coming and 1080p is being displayed. We have a wonderful picture. Kevin, do we have wonderful pictures? Or we, no, we do because we have every single set in a, a pixel for pixel um, mode at the moment, but I'm going to change that on Was two that of the them. Was that the default the way they came out of the box? No, of course not. Okay. The vast majority of TVs, I mean 90 plus percent, do not render 1080p out of the box. You've got to press at least one button to get the right aspect ratio. Now, that means 90 plus percent of the manufacturers are wrong, which could have possibly happened. Look at the difference uh, between every other line, black, white, black, white, TV and mud pictures starting with that. I mean, this is the especially on the edges. outside of your 19... 
point of horizontal resolution getting ruined, essentially. It's a general rule, and we're forced to do that. Cable and satellite globally from Hong Kong to Australia to Switzerland often has noise at the top of the picture, the strike lines, or vibrant 20 to 30 pixels worth of noise on the right side when the data stream gets inside what we call the active picture area. What's the active picture area? Well, 1920 by 1080 is where the images are supposed to be looking at picture quality and images of the cinematography, not junk from the satellite box or areas from the satellite or cable service. Kevin, can you see the difference back and forth pretty easily on that? Oh yeah, I think, does everybody see the difference oh, between yeah. this? Oh, and these two panels here, it's pretty clear. So, unfortunately, the nomenclature here is the bane of our existence. Uh, Kevin, what's the right name and the wrong name in the Samsung and the LGs for the right aspect ratio? Just scan is the right. And, and what's 16, the wrong name? 16 by 9. So, so what's in The other person knows a little bit about video. They're all going to pick 16 by 9. That's it. Right. And they're all screwed. Pretty <laughs> 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 much. <laughs> 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 in the middle of JVC, which is a Japanese translation instead of Korean, then just scan is wrong and 16 by 9 is right. <laughs> so the odds of doing this quite right are uh, very much like the monkey typing out the words of Shakespeare. It's not going to happen because <laughs> they can't find aspect ratios, can't understand the nomenclature. So calibrators have some job security here, which we kind of ignore. Can we go back to the slides, Kevin? Yes, sir. You should have a slide that says 1080p to p and 1080 not to be. If that's the case, do understand the manufacturers have no choice. Shipping product with overscan is a necessity of life because people see areas at the top or sides of the picture, they'll return to television sets. Is it old TV and overscan? No one may not. Uh, next slide, please, Kevin. 1080p done right. So if we go 1080p, in the right aspect ratio is better, it's simple. So there's just bitmaps to bitmaps. But there are dozens and dozens of other things we can make better, but first we should find the term better. And look, slide 37. Better comes down to things that were written before any of us in our respective rooms were born. Video and display standards. We live in a world of standards where we can sit and I can send Kevin to places all over the country. In fact, we've sent Kevin overseas. He's helped design some of the sets you have in a room, but he's calibrated more TVs than I care to admit because he's getting older. He used to be a kid. So <laughs> definitely getting older, but he's got some seasoned years of calibration behind him. And he sits there with the manufacturer across the pond and he can tell someone, you're wrong. This needs to be changed. And it's not Kevin's opinion. It's not my opinion. Let's give you where these things, where the opinions actually come from. Now, Customers should be caring about standards. One more slide, please, Kevin. And then another slide. How many people in the room own an audio video receiver? Can I see your show of hands? Uh, how many of you have set levels for surround sound on the audio video receiver? More hands? Ah, good. By the way, in the real world out there, not audio files, video files, or people in the business, it's uh, 2 to 3%. And how many of you use the internal freebie that came with the audio video receiver? Couple. How many do you actually use maybe a sound pressure level meter or a real-time analyzer? Okay. So we've got some exotic tools as well as the basic tools, but it's kind of unfortunate that we've got standards for surround sound. We go through huge efforts to include things in the receivers that let people do it themselves, but that requires them to do some work and understand what they're doing. So very few receivers get set up. CEA tells us about 2%, which strange enough, we'll give you some numbers later, that's kind of like the 2% of people who get the TVs calibrated. One more slide, Kevin. If we talk about what we are, and why Kevin and I are here to try and help, and why we're helping make better pictures, we're not talking about ISF work, we're talking about international standards put together, again, generations ago. We're training people on standards, and when push comes to shove, like the last two years, when there are no standards, for simple things like a front projector going into a home should have a screen. How big? There's no standard for that. How bright should the screen be? No standard. What screen surface should it be? What shape should it be? These are all fundamental questions that we had to cover so we put together committees for that. One more slide, please, Kevin. Are we on the CEA? Yes, we are. This is the people who put together the Total Electronics Show. There again. Right now, about 2,200 manufacturers in. Everyone who makes televisions or electronics is there. 
we volunteered to serve on a committee and because we actually did some work, we became chairs of the committee. Uh, you folks were only playing the elite. One of the people on the committee with us was the godfather of the elite, was Josh Caroff. And Robert knew him quite well, and a lot of us knew. Kevin's worked side by side with him for years. So we had some really bright people from HBO, from Echo Star, from Pioneer, uh, Stuart Phillips Green, and Star Studies, what he is putting these standards together. <coughs> They'll be available hopefully within 30 days on the CEA site. Put the name on the bottom is the CEB 23 in CEA speak, but we're answering some of those questions with some of the brightest people in the business to help build theaters. And Kevin asked me before some of the things we talked about with digital cinema. Uh, Kevin, the specs came from DCI, so our job in home theater is to be better than digital cinema. Mm -hmm. The spirit of the document is to meet or exceed, with an emphasis on exceed, the standards for home theater. Uh, Kevin, your own theater, do you think you're better than 150 on contrast ratio? Uh, at the moment, barely. And your own theater, we actually had control of the room when you owned it. Um, I had a lot more control of the room and I exceeded that handily. You can see how good projectors have gotten. At Dolby Labs, we had about 190 to 1 in a pitch black room. We took out 12 engineers with light shirts. Moving up to 220. <laughs> I love that story. So Cover that exit sign over there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> white walls, white ceiling, and a white tile floor. You're not going to get much contrast ratio. No matter how much money you throw in front of projector. Next slide, please. 50. Uh, besides Kevin, any 50 members here? Uh, we throw a little money because the journal is well read. It's a volunteer organization. People put their standards together since 1916. No one's Kevin? Rob, Rob, Robert's a member. I'm actually a charter engineer member from, from the broadcast TV days when I was a member back 25 Thank years ago. Thank you guys for supporting yeah. SIMTV. Again, as a volunteer organization like CEA and CEDIA, we like supporting as best we can. And we throw a few dollars for memberships. It's worth it. That's right. NTSC, does anyone know the standard joke about NTSC? <laughs> Come on, somebody. Not the same color. It's never twice the same go. color. There you go. <laughs> what is the intention? These are engineers volunteering. And I'll tell you, PAL and CCAM were better systems. They were later on. And also, so we're just as poorly deployed. One more slide, please. ATSC. Always twice screwy color. <laughs> <laughs> we fix these things by making a digital camera and they're worse. <laughs> yeah, we fixed it backwards right? to begin with. But then again, Kevin, I remember when we were in the audio magazines together. The CD came in with perfect digital sound. Oh, yeah. So perfect, we couldn't listen to it. <laughs> it was digital, so it was perfect. We were learning. One more slide, please. The BBC is probably familiar to everyone in the room as a broadcaster, because they're all the world's largest, but they don't really get the reputation as the standards organization they deserve. They're one of the largest standards organizations. And flip the slide, Kevin, for the first tools that I've seen in the history of television calibration. These are test cards. Simple scenario. One engineer held the card up, second engineer pointed the camera at the card, and what should you have on the screen? everything on the card. You shouldn't be missing parts of the dark, part of the picture. And as Kevin will show you later, all the world's much more complicated now. It's not just the dark parts of the picture that go away, it's the bright parts of the picture. And are there any Star Wars fans in the room? Yeah, man. Couple. Everybody. Uh, Mr. Lucas, of course, knew these slides well. He's funded some of the things at the East Ray Phillips, the film extension. Please look at the pattern in the lower right. Tell me whose vehicle that is. That's Vader's ship. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> that's a great well, <laughs> One more slide, please. That's cool. Here's the one where Kevin and I really have to go to work. The full specifications for digital communication are actually written by the United Nations. So when Kevin's sitting with the manufacturer, he's sitting with the missing part of the picture, we can tell the point blank. Spend a few hours with Kevin, read the software, and we'll have something that is ITU compliant or compliant with the specifications for how we communicate globally. And you folks are, of course, all familiar with HDMI. The HDMI specifications mirror exactly the IT specifications. They are one and the same. So we know how to talk digitally to each other. Unfortunately, we are in the lame world of 8-bit video on Blu-ray and standard F DVD. So we've got a lot of work to do to make 8-bit video look good. Well, a 4 camera gives us 10-bit. 